Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of Unboxed, Watched, and Reviewed. So we have a package and here it is. Now this movie we have heard about for a very long time. A lot of you have seen it and I know a lot of you are curious about it. So let's see what it is. This comes from, I'm not going to tell you what it comes from, but it comes from him. Oh god, we got some bubble wrap. Inside the package were some wonderful gifts. Oh my god, we have what looks like a picture. Oh, to Tanner, love, Jimmy, 2016. All right, well, I'm gonna have glitter on myself for the next five years, but that, that's okay, because it's this. What is it? It's a sperm glob with a pussy. I mean, was that, would that be accurate? I love this. Also in the package were some stickers, a poster, a book. It's a little fucking book. Have you figured out what the movie is yet? If not, I'll give you a hint. The director made the title card for the show. Well, he actually did the background and Robin Bougie did the picture, and I love it. So let's get to the movie, shall we? When Black Birds Fly. The newest animated film from Jimmy Screamer Claus, director of Where the Dead Go to Die. This film contains scenes that some viewers may find disturbing. Fangoria says that this movie makes you feel like somebody slipped you a strong psychedelic and threw you into enemy territory. Oh, that's good. Extra features include 20 minutes of reading the fucking extra features. So with that said, you guys ready to start? When Blackbirds Fly? I know I am. Let's do it. This is just gonna be so fucking fucked up. It's just so pretty. Like these colors are just the best. They're total Enter the Void colors. Enter the Void is the consequential. Essential. 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 Quintial. Quintial. Essential. I don't know how to say that word. What is it? What is Enter the Void when it comes to being a trip in movie? Consequential. It's the quintessential movie. Quintessential. I hope this is sick. Like I hope this is sick. There they go. Play. It looks like it's from the 40s. Hey! Now here's something I didn't tell you. Guess who's in this movie? Starring so and so so and so so and so millions of people and Tanner Somerset. Oh yes, you know who that is. Me! That's right, I based my name on my first name and my middle name. In the credits, it's spelled wrong. Spelled with two M's, but that is not Jimmy's fault. That's how I told him it was spelled. Here's a little Alaska guts for you. After creating that name, I was showing a family member, my IMDB, page hey look at this and they said that's spelled wrong there's only one m in your name i said no 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 i realized that i've been spelling my middle name wrong my entire life it only has one m only one m never knew here we go so the movie begins with a couple and they want to adopt a baby how would you love to raise a child in heaven Heaven is the name of the town in which all of the people are imprisoned by this giant circular wall. Their leader and god, Cain, tells them they can never venture beyond the town's walls, or they will run into the evil one and die. Anyway, there's a knock at the door and... Okay, what the fuck's going on here now? A black pope is at the door and he tells them that their application for adoption has been approved. And they're walking down this path. It looks like a disco floor and there's this weird little dog man. What the fuck? They enter a big cavern and all around them are... There's those things. The sperm globs with pussies. This is so weird. Out of all of the pussied sperm globs, the woman chooses one that she wants to raise as her child. I said, oh, what's this one? And it's this really colorful one. And he said, nobody's ever wanted that one. Well, she does. So they go back to the church where the birthing process begins. Huh. Well, he just took out a huge knife and shoved it down his throat and puked it into this... What? And the woman took the knife and she just hopped down and just started plowing her pussy down onto the blade. But now they're spitting the blood onto the worm and it's turning into a child. So in order to have that kid, they had to do all that fucked up shit? There's the kid. So the kid's very Amish looking and he's got this weird little face. It kind of looks like that shithead Cortland Mead. Anyway, they take the kid home, whose name is Marius, and they tell him all about Cain and the rules of heaven. He deserves all our love, all our praise, and all our things. 
He then goes to school the next day where we learn more about it. They're in this old schoolhouse, and somebody's writing on the board, I am not better than Cain, I'm not better than Cain. So at recess, Marius meets this girl named Eden, and she believes that there's really life outside of the wall, and she wants to go check it out. Marius is like, well, you know, I don't know about that. Meanwhile, back at home, his parents are watching this propaganda film. Here comes a flying gay lesbian. It's a little redundant there, but okay, let's, let's just change it to here comes a flying lesbian. The flying lesbian is actually Cain, and here we learn all about the evil one who resides on the other side of the wall. The next morning, while walking to school, Marius sees a blackbird. And the bird flew over the wall into a colorful sky. And the wall opened up, and there's all this rainbow shit kind of shooting out of it. And the kid's walking up to it, and it's a hole. He looks through the hole, and he hears a voice that's really hard to understand. What? Out of all those special features, are closed captioning an option? English subtitles! The voice is coming from a kitty who says, Help me, my leg is broken! And Marius is like, Jesus Christ, this is fucked up! And he went running off, and it was this little cat thing. He tells Eden about it, and she's like, We gotta go back! So they're gonna go back to the hole. She's crawling through the wall, and there's the division. Oh shit, they're in tripping land. The guards who patrol the streets like a SWAT team see that they ran through the hole and they chase after them. They escape the guards and the cat says, hurry up, eat this fruit, it'll make you invisible. She says, oh, I tell you, host. And she does and she starts tripping her fucking pussy balls off. While the cat is squirming around in psychedelic bliss, the guards catch up to the kids and they're like, oh, and they eat the fruit. It fucks them up pretty good. I mean, it does this to their faces. He's tripping so hard his face just fell off. The cat stands up and we see that it has these big horns now and it shoots out these blackbirds at the guards, killing them. That kid is just tripping. I mean, imagine giving acid to a nine-year-old kid. That's what's going on. The feline says, let me show you around before the fruit wears off, and they go on this little tour. And the cat's walking off, shaking its ass. They go into a little prison type place and they see some indescribable things. It's just fucked up. I can't even explain it. Just really fucked up creatures. He said hello to the creature and it's got these big tits. Inside of this prison place is a prisoner who's chained up to this cross and they are the supposed evil one according to Cain. I think. I don't know. I don't know. It's a little confusing. And it says trespasser written on a sign above her head. Its face is insane. We then get a flashback that explains how this woman got chained to the cross, and it's a long story, and it begins with God as a misfit child. And God is a big eyeball head. God meets the trespasser, and immediately they hit it off. Oh, she's fucking God, who's this mirror ball head with a crown on, and he just had this big clear cock, like Tonga. God is so odd. I'm not going to get into this whole story because it's an epic fable, but I will tell you that at one point this happens. Some weird head popped out of her pussy. Now she's laying down and the whole ground is just going insane and she looks like that. Like she just gave herself a shot. You know, a nurse said to me once, your veins are so big I could throw a dart into them. And I wasn't even the patient. What kind of fucking thing is that to say to somebody who's sitting by their dad? Hey, yeah, yeah, you got some big fucking veins. I did, never noticed. Never noticed. All right, sorry. This woman is chasing around a naked child. Some, a ball rolled out of her pussy and this guy picked it up. He's licking it. The flashback ends and... And back to the cat and the kids. The cat said, watch, do what I do. It's ripping its face off. The kids are going, this, we gotta do this? Leaving Eden behind, Marius runs into this room where he sees all sorts of despicable acts of debauchery. Looks like horses fucking people without skin, a moose man with big teeth fucking one of the officers up the ass. The kid ran back to the wall, there's the hole, and he jumped through it. He's back in black and white cane land. Kind of lets the eyes relax for a sec. One of the guards returns him home, and the mom runs up to him and gives him a hug. The mom said, I love you so much, and he went, 
and he spit a colorful worm into her mouth and she's shaking her head around and it's morphing into, I don't even know what the fuck it is. I said, are you okay, mom? And she's, oh, turning into this thing. She goes, oh, she's fine, dear. Well, let's get you ready for bed. What the fuck? Then we see Eden, who's chained up to this thing. They have her ripped apart now. I mean, what's going on here? Eden gets possessed and is told to summon her new form, the Beast Within. And she turned into this weird dog and she's looking at her new body like, fuck. Well, she's in a spider web and it backed up and there's this giant spider with a woman's face on it crawling at her. And she's shaking around and her head's getting these weird bubbly looking things on it. The cat returns Eden to the other side of the wall and says, If you understand. You must find him and kill him. Back home, the family's watching this kids show with these two people, a little girl and a guy named Uncle T, and they're chatting it up talking about Kane. There's me! I don't know about y'all, but I feel like seeing a song. Uncle T. Come over here, Uncle T. And this is fangirl Sarah, who I'm doing the scene with, who I adore. My name's on there. Next to Tanner Somerset, my favorite YouTuber in the fucking world. I love Tanner so much. So when Jimmy told me I got to, you know, do a little cold voice character with uh, Tanner's voice, I was like, yes. I've been watching Sarah's videos for years. I've been watching them since I was doing reviews that looks like this. And the killer's supposed to be this sexy, little evil, little sexy devil girl. Uh, she walks around in sweat clothes, like sweatpants and a, and a hoodie with cleavage showing, but it's fucking sweatpants. And she's supposed to be like so hot, like unzipping her thing and everything. I mean, if she's going on a little jog, then they nailed it, but she's not. A very bad attempt at trying to be sexy. So who is this horrible woman? RG's herself. You're going to have to learn to take pain like a man, Tom. It was ridiculous, it was stupid, it was terrible. It was great, it was really, really good. Anyway, back to the movie. And the mom's having some sort of seizure while she's watching me on TV. There's her tits and the dad said, Marius, don't look. Marius runs out the front door trying to find some help and the dad goes into the garage that doubles as a bird rescue shelter. One of his sick birds is saying, your wife's giving birth in there, get in there. A white blob starts punching its way out of the mother's pussy. She's laying there naked. While Marius is running around, Eden pops out. And the kid's saying, help me! My mom's freaking out, my dad's talking to birds! Eden is attacking the little boy with a knife. The army pulled up and said, put down your weapon, bitch, or we're gonna shoot your ass. And they're shooting her ass. And back at the house, the bird is coaching the dad on how to help the mom give birth to this thing. <laughs> The bird's saying, take off your clothes. And the dad just got naked and he has a Barbie crotch. No cock. One of Kane's laws is for married couples never to see each other naked. So sex is something that is completely foreign to them. The bird is just watching, instructing him on how to fuck his wife. So Daryl starts pressing his big extended taint up against the mom's asshole. He's rubbing his thing up against her ass and she's getting fucked like this, looking like an old cartoon slut. And it's a shot in between her legs and that thing just came way out and the naked dad is stabbing it. You know, just pulled it up and there's all these innards attached to it. And had his little head and he just went, Jesus! And it's scooting away, it's running across the floor. And ran out into the town. Daryl catches the baby and keeps on running. The cops invade the home where they see the mom and they said, we're gonna kill you now, bitch. And they killed her. Then for the first time, we see Kane, who's up on this balcony being a childish piece of shit. Marching around up on this castle, it's Kane, go Kane, 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 Kane. He's singing his name, Kane. The kid's in an elevator going up to Kane. He comes face to face with Kane, and he's really pissed off because the kid left. This world I provided you isn't enough. Kid's going, I don't get it, I don't get it. We then get another flashback involving Kane and the trespasser who's chained up on the other side, and it's the same thing only told from Kane's perspective. Kind of like he said, she said, minus the HBO first look. Y'all end up still loving her. And just like her story, this one is fucked up and dirty as well. 
you give me this weird tickling itch, but no matter how hard I scratch it, I just can't soothe it. It's becoming swollen. Touch it for me, please! It's this beard rapist, and his cock area is just bulging out, and now there's like these worms shooting out of it, and he's gonna fuck her with them. Now they're all around her fucking her with their veiny-like organ things, naturally. One of the soldiers radios in, interrupting Kane's story, and he says, We found the boy's father scaling the wall. And Kane says, Kill that fucking asshole. You got that, you dumb fuck? But before they do, the dad makes it to the other side of the wall, still carrying the baby. The dad's walking through the tripping zone. He's like, Where am I? Oh, and by the way, Daryl looks like this now. He looks like the guy from Hellraiser, who Julia wants to fuck, with her little star earrings. Every time I think of Hellraiser, the only thing I think of is Julia's star earrings. And the fact that that guy's name is Rory. He runs into Eyeball Head, who's standing in front of the trespasser, and he tells Daryl to kill the goddamn baby. He says this is the only creature to be born of virgin skin, and this bitch really likes it, so let's kill the fucking thing. That'll really get to her. That'll strike a nerve. He set it down on the altar and grabbed the knife. And with only ten minutes remaining, I'm gonna leave it at that. It's just very fucked up. Is the dad gonna kill the baby? Is Kane gonna kill the kid? Is somebody gonna say this? You fucking bunny rabbit fuck! You're just gonna have to see for yourself. And it's done. There's the credits. So that was When Black Birds Fly. That was so fucking trippy and delightful. There's me and Sarah. So what do I give When Black Birds Fly on a scale of one to five? Well, I'd have to give it a five. It's not as extreme as Where the Dead Go to Die. I don't think many things are. It's so impressive to think that Jimmy made this movie all by himself. He's great. If it was a regular movie, you would look at it and think, oh wow, that's a really good shot. It's one thing to make an animated movie that's really fucked up, but it's another thing to make it good and fun to watch. So it looks crazy, and the story is crazy. If you've seen Where the Dead Go to Die, you have to see this one. So, thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you next time!